As the James Webb Space Telescope continues to make amazing discoveries, many people are curious about what the universe looked like when it was only 400 million years old. How did the first galaxies form and evolve in such a short time? And how can we see them today with our telescopes? Well, you're in luck, because the James Webb Space Telescope has just revealed another stunning discovery that will blow your mind and shed some light on these questions. The discovery is a pair or small group of galaxies within a galaxy that formed when the cosmos was only 3% of its current age. This galaxy, called Max 0647 JD or Max JD in short, is one of the most distant and oldest galaxies ever seen, dating back to about 13 billion years ago. But that's not all. The James Webb Space Telescope also saw this galaxy not once, but three times in different locations on the sky. And within each image, it saw two objects with different colors and brightnesses. How is this possible? And what does this discovery tell us about the history and evolution of galaxies in the universe? How does it challenge our models and theories of galaxy formation and evolution? And how did the James Webb Space Telescope manage to see such a small and faint galaxy? In this video, we'll answer all these questions and more. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn something new about our amazing universe. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Let's get started. Since Max JD is very small and faint, even for Webb's powerful instruments, observing it was not an easy task. To see it, Webb had to use a special technique called deep field observation. A deep field observation is when a telescope points at a small patch of sky for a long time, collecting as much light as possible from the distant objects in that region. By doing this, the telescope can reveal fainter and more distant objects than it could otherwise see. This technique was first used by the Hubble Space Telescope, which produced some of the most iconic images of the early universe, such as the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field is an amazing image of a small region of space that contains about 10,000 galaxies of various ages, sizes, shapes, and colors. It was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope over 10 days in 2004, using a long exposure technique that collected as much light as possible from the distant objects. The image shows galaxies that existed about 13 billion years ago, and it has helped astronomers study galaxy formation and evolution. James Webb used a similar technique to observe Max JD, but with some advantages like a larger mirror, advanced infrared capabilities, and more advanced instruments than Hubble. Using this technique, Webb observed Max JD for about 20 hours, what it saw was surprising and amazing. It saw not one, but three images of Max JD in different locations in the sky. And within each image, it saw not one, but two objects with different colors and brightnesses. These images are the result of gravitational lensing by a cluster of galaxies called Max 0647 in the foreground, which we will explain in more detail in the next section. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon that occurs when light from an object is bent or distorted by the gravity of another object along its path. This happens because gravity can warp space and time around massive objects like stars or galaxies. Gravitational lensing can have different effects depending on how strong and aligned the gravity sources are with respect to the light source and the observer. One effect is called weak lensing, which slightly changes the shape or size of an object without changing its position. Another effect is called strong lensing, which can create multiple images or arcs of an object around a gravity source. This phenomenon is important because it can act like a natural telescope that magnifies and brightens distant objects that would otherwise be too faint or small to see. By using gravitational lensing, we can study the properties and structures of these objects in more detail. This is what astronomers did with Max JD using Webb's near-infrared camera, NERCAM, instrument. They used a cluster of galaxies called Max 0647 as a gravitational lens to magnify and multiply the image of Max JD. The cluster's gravity bent and amplified the light from the galaxy, creating three images of it in different locations. These images are marked as JD1, JD2, and JD3 in the image.
One of the most surprising findings about Max JD is that it's not a single galaxy, but a pair or small group of galaxies. With Webb, astronomers were able to resolve two objects within this galaxy, which could be either two separate galaxies or two clumps of stars within a galaxy. They also found that these objects have different colors, indicating different ages, dust contents, and star formation rates. The larger object, which is about 200 light-years across, is bluer and brighter than the smaller object, which is about 100 light-years across. The blue color suggests that it has very young stars and almost no dust, while the red color suggests that it has older stars and more dust. The larger object also has a higher star formation rate than the smaller object, meaning that it's producing more new stars per year. The total mass of Max JD is estimated to be about 10 million times the mass of our Sun, which is very small for a galaxy. For comparison, our Milky Way galaxy has a mass of about 1 trillion times the mass of our Sun. The total luminosity of Max JD is estimated to be about 0.1 times the luminosity of our Sun, which is very faint for a galaxy. For comparison, our Milky Way galaxy has a luminosity of about 25 billion times the luminosity of our Sun. These characteristics and properties suggest that Max JD is one of the first galaxies to form in the universe when the first stars and galaxies were emerging from the Dark Ages after the Big Bang. The discovery of Max JD challenges our theories of galaxy formation and evolution in different ways. It shows that galaxy formation was not a simple or uniform process, but a complex and diverse one that involved multiple objects with different properties. It also shows that galaxy evolution was not a linear or predictable process, but a dynamic and variable one that involved interactions and feedbacks between different objects. One of the theories that tries to explain how galaxies formed and evolved is called the hierarchical model, which suggests that small irregular galaxies formed first and then merged with each other over time to form larger and more complex galaxies. This model predicts that galaxy mergers were more common in the past than they are today. However, Max JD does not fit well with this model. It shows that some galaxies were already complex and diverse at 400 million years after the Big Bang, when most galaxies were expected to be simple and uniform. It also shows that some galaxy mergers were not violent or destructive, but gentle or creative. Another theory that tries to explain how galaxies formed and evolved is called the monolithic model, which suggests that massive elliptical galaxies formed in a single, rapid collapse of gas and dark matter, during which almost all the gas was turned quickly into stars. This model predicts that elliptical galaxies have old stars and little gas. However, Max JD does not fit well with this model either. It shows that some elliptical galaxies were not formed in a single event, but in a series of events that involved multiple objects with different properties. It also shows that some elliptical galaxies have young stars and gas. The discovery of Max JD also opens new questions for future research. For example, how did these objects form within Max JD? How did they interact with each other and with their environment? How did they affect the formation and evolution of other galaxies around them? How common are these objects in the early universe? To answer these questions, we need to observe more distant galaxies with Webb, with that we can learn more about their properties and structures. By comparing these observations with simulations, we can test and refine our models and theories. We hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new about our amazing universe. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts or questions about this discovery. Thank you for watching and see you next time.